It's review time on Happy the Home. Today, we will revisit the last few programs. Join us as we look again at a most powerful motivator, one-on-one -on -one time, and it's not my birthday. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to review the last three programs. And you might say, well, why do we need to review? Um, well, think of it this way. If your um, child was going to be doing a test in the morning at school and you were to in inquire of them, so have you got your math test tomorrow? And they say, yeah. Uh, have you looked over your work? Well, Nah, we did it all once in class, I don't need to go over it. I think as a parent you might say, well, it might be worth just skipping through the pages and jogging up your memory. So that is exactly what we're going to do on you today. Um, we want to review, as Carolyn said, those last three programs. And the, the reason being is that if you have not been taking part in the specific challenges, we want to challenge you afresh to get involved in this program. And that means doing some of the things that we're outlining. You know, there's an old saying, you, you may have heard it, we don't get to learn to swim on the shore. Well, you're on the shore at the moment. You're sat there in your comfy chair or you're in the kitchen or whatever you're doing and you're watching this program. That's fairly comfy. We want you to actually get in the water, so to speak, with your children and do some of these challenges that we put at the end of each program. So we're going to review the programs, we'll review the challenges. Um, if you have been doing the challenges, then there's a text I'd like to give you. Um, it says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So you might say, yeah, Paul, I've been doing these, these challenges you've been putting out. I've been doing my best and we're, we're seeing improvement. But boy, when are you going to you know, ease off on us? Well, I must admit, this first section of Happy the Home, the first 13 programs, is the most intensive on the parents. We won't be keeping up this pace all the way through. But don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap. That means you will gain the benefits if you faint not, if you don't give up. So stick with us, keep going. So we're going to look at the first program uh, in this today's review, which is program number six, and it was a most powerful motivator. If you remember the scripture we based that program on was a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. That was Proverbs 25, 11. You know, our, I'll see if you can remember, just say out loud, what was a most powerful motivator? What was it if you watched that program? Well, probably if they watched that program, the thing they're remembering was the disastrous beginnings of that program. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we, uh, we, we hope that that was beneficial to you. The, if you remember that uh, opener, the reason we had the children, they were causing chaos here in the living room and the parents came back from a doctor's appointment and the first time we handled it as typically we would, um, any parent would handle, we just kind of lost it, we just kind of vented on the children and there was no encouragement for change in the children, all we did was kind of scare them I guess. Um, and then Carolyn and I came back and we role played doing that all over again. The children were in here making a mess again. We came back from the doctor's appointment. And if you notice in that program, it was that role play, it was too much of a stressful situation to deal with it right then. So what we did was we just simply gave instructions for tidy up and we left it at that and then we talked about it as a family afterwards which is really it, it is a way of uh, not discouraging as well as encouraging so Carolyn we have talked about that program since and I think it would be fair to say the children wanted you the viewers to know that, that was a role play that is not what they usually do <laughs> <laughs> but you know the the point of the the program there a most powerful motivator was words 
encouraging words spoken to our children are truly like um, gold and silver to them. And it's a wonder that we as parents don't use encouragement mm -hmm. more often. Um, we talked about as people encourage us, how that lifts our hearts and how it draws us out to them. And we are the ones that God has put in charge of our children to uh, bring them up. So we need to use encouraging words, parents. I know it's not natural. Um, it's very natural just to treat the children, um, I was going to say like dirt, and I, I don't, that sounds too strong, but we can, you talked about that negative cycle, remember? Yeah, when you get into that and you just can't help it, you just keep negative after negative thing comes out and you're kind of locked into it. I think also that often people treat their pets better than their children. But you know, encouraging words are not just beneficial to our children, but they're beneficial to ourselves because we are influenced by our own words. And the more negative things we say, the more negative we feel and the more negative we say. And so it's a vicious circle that keeps going around because of the words that come out of our own mouths. I know that we have, you and I have both struggled with giving encouragement at times. And we have found that as we speak that encouragement out, we influence ourselves to be more encouraging. And so, it's the, it, Carolyn, you talked about the vicious circle. This is a positive circle mm -hmm. going in the right direction. I mentioned also on program number six, which we're reviewing at the moment, um, hey, Carolyn, maybe you could just grab the Connected Family book. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to remind you as a way of review that each program corresponds to a chapter in The Connected Family, the book that Carolyn and I put together. T and it was the sole purpose of that book was to be a companion to this program. So if you're watching the program, great. Get the book as well, because it's <laughs> the other half of what we're trying to present. Y go ahead. I was going to talk about encouragement in little ways too. Encouragement, you know, in big things is very important, but it's the little things every day that make up the sum of what life is. And so we have sought as a family to have non, some of those non-verbal encouraging gestures, so to speak. Because we travel a lot, we're seminar speakers, we're not always able to be right next to our children in conversation about things, but we have different, different actions. And, you know, one of these, as we're looking at our child across the other side of the room, we'll do this, and they know it's a question. How are you doing? Are you doing good? Doing bad? You doing okay? Not kind of, you know, and I'll do one of these. And we know just what we're talking about, and that's just a real encouragement. Or we'll walk past and we'll just kind of blow a kiss as we go by, and they know we mean, hey, we're connected with you. Our hearts are with you, even if we can't be right there in every moment. You know, if, if you have some of this encouraging communication with your children, I know one family, and they started to try and do this. And the way they were trying to give encouragement to their children was just a smile, just, <laughs> just a nice, hearty smile. And the children kind of looked at her like, oh, what's mom's problem? She keeps smiling at us. <laughs> Man, that's weird. And, you know, <laughs> so don't expect immediate results. If you start trying to give encouragement and be cheerful around your children, they're probably going to think, there's something up with mom and dad. Praise God if there's something up with mom and dad. Mom and dad are becoming new parents. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carolyn, why are some, some reasons that, uh, that we are not the encouraging parents that we should be? Can you just run through the well, first one? One of those is that we get zoned into what the situation is. Right. And so we send our child to clean their room, to clean the kitchen, whatever it is we want them to do, and we don't go and say, oh, wow, you did a great job. We go and we say, huh, how come this is still not good and this isn't good? And I can share it very real because I really have had to struggle with that, work with that, and continue to grow in that area. So just expecting them to have achieved something to at a level we think and thereby if they haven't we aren't encouraging right so then we focus on the problem right. rather than encouraging the little bit of good even if our children try to do good even if they fail in what they were trying to do encouragement for trying it goes a long way so we encouraged you in that program that this is this encouraging words is quite a bit more difficult then you might think, you might go away from this program and say, okay, that, that sounds doable. 
and then you go through a whole day and you think, man, I haven't said anything. In fact, I've just gone into that negative cycle that Carolyn spoke about. So you are going to need to pray about this. Uh, if you're a praying person, then great. If you're not a praying person, you can just say, God, help me to be an encouraging parent. And you'll hear, uh, you'll get a little thought in your conscience that will remind you, you could say something nice now. And if you don't miss it, sometimes it happens so quick you miss it. But if you don't miss it, you can speak those encouraging words to your children. It is a very powerful tool. The big businesses spend millions every year on advertising, encouraging us to buy stuff. And we end up buying it because they know encouragement works. And we want to assure you that encouragement in the family is the missing ingredient in many families to a happy um, enjoyable relationship with our children. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we we're going to talk a little bit about flattery and praise, but we're, we'll leave you to order DVD number six from the, the number on the corner of the screen there. We're going to move on for the sake of time, and we're going to review program seven, which was one-on-one -on -one time. And actually, in this series, Happy the Home, we're going to have two programs. One of them's called One-on-One -on -one Time Part One, and the other one's called One-on-One -on -one Time Part Two. That, that's yet ahead of us, but we're just going to review the first time we went around. One-on-one -on -one time in a marriage is um, enjoyable, don't you say? It is vital. What, what are some of the benefits of that? What, what does one-on-one -on -one time do for us? One-on-one -on -one time enables us to become deeper heart to heart and more intimate in our conversations and, and in our relationship and so we, know, we understand that as it pertains to marriage but often we don't think of that in relation to our children I mean they're just our children you know they grow up and they go on in life and we're together and that's how that works out but we can have a very different bond with our children if we choose to do that and it's going to have to be a choice it doesn't come naturally but that one-on-one -on -one time is an opportunity to go deeper to be more personally connected it, it just creates an atmosphere of intimacy mm -hmm. that can't be there any other way. Um, we, we tend to, these days, in the way the world is, we have one-on-one -on -one time with our PC. It's a personal computer. One person drives it, and that's kind of how it is, and we're much more used to that than we are sitting down and having one-on-one -on -one time with another individual. Because yeah, a lot of those products are called I. It's all about um, me. I. It's not a we. We don't get we pods and we <laughs> phones. It's all I. It's all about me and my little world that can shrink down into a <laughs> tiny little screen. So the, the art of one-on-one -on -one time is being lost. It's being lost. In this generation, we are losing it. And so we want to try and reverse that. And we have found, Carol and I have found great benefit in having some personal one-on-one -on -one time with our children. You know, and when we first started doing it, we found the children didn't really know how to converse with us. And we didn't know how to, how to deal with them either. No, we'd say, well, what's wrong with you? Why don't you talk? And so we would, <laughs> we would ask a question. So, Caleb, how are you doing today? Good. Good. So, what's good? Yeah, I'm doing good. And, you know, if you didn't have the motivation to want to dig deeper, find out what good really meant, that could be the end of the conversation. And we've had conversations like that. And the Lord has called to our heart to say, you need to make the effort. And that's what it takes, friends, putting out some effort to dig deeper and find out a bit more about good. Okay, so we'd say, no, good isn't good enough. We want to know <laughs> what's good what's good about your day. <laughs> well, if you remember in program number uh, seven, the one we're reviewing now, we talked uh, in there about the importance of trying to engage your children in things that are interesting to them. Mm -hmm. And then they're much more likely to open up. And I shared the experience of us going skiing together. My children and I, we go ski down the slope and that really isn't one-on-one -on -one time. We're, we're just kind of stay upright and not get hurt and dodge the trees and stuff but when we get to the bottom we get back on the chairlift and we go up together then it's one-on-one -on -one time and I can start to talk to the children their hearts open up you had some special time taking Hannah to town I remember that we talked about in number seven but um, where do we find this principle of one-on-one -on -one time in the scriptures it's right there in um, Luke chapter 9 and verse 10. And it wasn't necessarily one-on-one -on -one time, but you're, let me read it to you. 
Um, then he, this is talking about Jesus, took them, in context, it's the disciples. So Jesus took his disciples and went aside privately, away from the crowd, into a desert place, or a deserted place. And there they spent some time together, and they were talking. Jesus himself knew that if he could take his children, his disciples, his his 12 unruly sons, so to speak, if he could take them away from the busyness of the scribes and the Pharisees and the towns and all of that, and he could have some special time with them, that the atmosphere would go deeper and he would get down to a heart level. We need to learn that lesson from our example, from our Savior. There is a real value in one on one time. We challenged you at the end of that program to, and I know it's a sacrifice. You, you're sitting there at home thinking, I agree with everything, you, everything you're saying, but where are we going to find the time? Well, why are you watching this program? Are you watching this program for maybe some entertainment, just because you've got nothing else to do? Or is it that you want to be a better parent? If you want to be a better parent, it's going to have to take some things that you've not done before. And maybe you've not had that one-on-one -on -one time. Um, I'm going to talk in a later program how Hannah and I were actually going camping with a, a group of people, uh, the youth class from church. But Hannah and I went in a day or so early and did some biking together. And we had a great time just... Hannah felt like she could just chitter-chatter. I don't want to get too much into that story because that comes in a, in a later program. But let's move on, Carolyn, uh, for the... Well, if, you, if you're looking for some ideas just, just to kind of propel or get into this one-on-one -on -one time, again, we'd encourage you, take a look, get a hold of the book. We have ideas here to get you started on one-on-one -on -one time. It's not something that's necessarily natural that you've done before, and so you're going to be needing to get a few ideas. Look in there, well, that'll get you going. You know, I think we have time that you could talk a little bit about the time that you and Hannah had in the thrift stores, just in review. Right, yeah. So Hannah and I had some fun one-on-one -on -one time, just the two of us. We, you know, take those opportunities when you're driving your children places, going to town. You have one-on-one -on -one time, maybe, if not if all the other children are doing other things. So Hannah and I were, we went to the thrift stores together for our one-on-one -on -one time, and it was just a bunch of fun. We weren't doing any other shopping. We could have. There was plenty of things I could have done, but I determined that this was just going to be, this was something Hannah said would be fun, this was just going to be what she and I would do. And we had a blast. You know, we're just about, she's just about, not quite my size, but almost. So we're swapping clothes out. If it didn't fit her, it might fit me. And, you know, we just had a lot of fun together. And just chit-chatting away. And there was plenty of time. And <laughs> the fun part of the I, thing was that Daddy gets to pay whatever we buy. <laughs> I can imagine two girls going shopping with no guys, it couldn't be anything but fun. Yeah, it was <laughs> Especially if fun. we're paying the bill. Of course. <laughs> we've not got you there saying, ha-ha, you know, speed up, let's get going. And we're just like, oh, this is just really great. But does it have to be a long period of time? No, it doesn't. This one-on-one -on -one time can just be driving your child to piano lesson or to swimming lesson or whatever it is, and you just take the opportunity to connect with them. You know, how, is, how are things really going? And at first, as we said, it may be a little awkward. You're not used to this. But as you build upon this, as you, you may have to go do some real fun stuff, kicking the ball in the park or whatever your child wants to do, to begin to connect with their heart and then the Lord will help you to go deeper and there may be some things you didn't know that you need to discover. There is a great one-on-one -on -one time, dads, that Carolyn just cued us into, or moms for that matter. If you've got little children, just take them to the park, feed the ducks, throw the frisbee around, mm -hmm. kick the ball, whatever. But, you know, and one more thing on one-on-one -on -one time. Put the cell phone in the off position Absolutely. yeah off not even on vibrate off entirely because if you're supposed to be having a one-on-one -on -one time with the children I can pretty much guarantee you the phone's gonna ring the text messages will come rolling in or whatever and you're supposed to be throwing the frisbee but now you're putting out some kind of fire on the phone oh did they and really and the child sat there kind of sat on the ball thinking well I thought this was a special time with me and mommy and now you know she's on the phone so get rid of the cell phone just for an hour, or if you go in for half a day, half a day, leave it in the car. The, the world will cope. You, you 
coped, people cope for thousands of years without cell phones. We can go for half an hour or half a day. So leave the cell phone behind just for a little while and invest some quality time in those precious children. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's reviewed on uh, program number seven, which was entitled One on One Time Part One. Uh, I think the challenge is obvious. We want you to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with your children. Let's look, talk a little bit about um, the, the last program, in actual mm -hmm. fact, program number eight. It was entitled, But It's Not My Birthday. Um, we spoke a little bit about that text at the beginning, Matthew 7, verse 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good, good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those that ask him? God seeks to bless us, his children, by giving us gifts, by giving us blessings, and it draws our heart to him. Then why shouldn't we as parents be wise parents, copy the example of our heavenly father who is parenting us all the way into the heavenly kingdom and give wise gifts to our precious children? You know, what are some of the things we talked about on that program, Carolyn? Well, it's an action program. This is not a program to sit and listen and go, oh, how nice, and then move on to the next thing. This is something that you're going to be getting involved in doing. And it relates to a previous program where we talked about what kind of dreams do our children have. This is about fulfilling some of those dreams, starting to get the ball rolling. And for those of you that were on viewing the program, the last program, Caleb came on the set and he did not know that we had a gift hidden on set for him. And um, that was a big surprise to him. And we found out recently by going through that little test you can do online that his love language, number one tops, is gifts. And so we knew that would be something really special to Caleb. And, you know, it was the opportunity for him to go somewhere. He's always dreamed of going to Kitty Hawk. That's going to take time for his parents. That's going to take some money invested. Not a huge amount of money, but some, an investment of both those two things. And so this is an opportunity not to wait till it's a birthday or some other statutory time you're supposed to show your love and affection through gifts. This is out of the blue because you love your child. Just the way the Lord ministers to us. He doesn't just do nice things on our birthday. He's reaching out to us all the time. And this is an opportunity for us to do the same for our children. And the kind of gift that we are talking about is not wandering around, you know, Toys R Us or whatever and just cruising the aisles. Oh, yeah, that, that's $15. So you find something to grab. Yeah, that $15, that'll do, and just grab it and stick it in the cart. It's a thoughtful gift. It's a, it's a sitting down and even praying about it. Lord, what is it? It's even asking your children questions. Not, don't make any uh, great promises, but... You know, it's a time to be very thoughtful in that gift because it's, it's meant to be, this kind of gift that we're talking about is a different kind of gift. It's one that we are going to really minister to a desire that our children have. And so we can't be casual in that gift. It has to be a, um, has to be a gift that is going to meet the, a heart cry and not a gift that's just uh, for material things. We talked on that program also that really what the children want more than anything, if they could verbalize it. Uh, in fact, there have been some studies done on this as well, and I, I won't quote them because I can't remember them exactly, but I remember one study, it was something like that when teenagers were asked what they missed most growing up, um, the, the overwhelming answer was time with mom and dad. And we tend to buy them stuff instead of giving them ourselves. And it's us they want. They want companionship with us. They're not going to tell you that necessarily. You know, if you say, what do you want? Oh, yeah, I just want time with you. I mean, in many families, um, it's not even cool anymore for the children to want to spend time with the parents. It's, that's like... But it's they, a heart cry. It, it's a heart cry. And it's because it's... it's um, Peer pressure is putting that on there, and we know who deals with the peer pressure. That comes from the enemy of families. He's trying to break up the families. The heart cry of young people is that they want time with mom and dad. So think of some special gift. Do some investigation. You know, I am feeling a little bit sorry for you as the viewers at this point because we keep referring back. And... Um, 
If you haven't seen the programs previous to this, I encourage you to write into 3ABN, they'll send you the DVDs, I'm sure. Or if you wait a long time, they will probably replay this and you can get to watch <laughs> it all over again. But we're a ways away from getting back to this point. But what you can do if you want to catch up is you can go online, um, you can get yourself the Connected Family book again. And sorry we keep pushing that. I think they're going to run an ad for that here in a moment. But it really will get you up to speed on where we are. And it will make a difference. If when you're sick, you and you're, you're really sick, you've been in an auto accident or whatever, they put you in intensive care and you get very specialized treatment where you've got people working around the clock to get you back to health and really that's what these first few programs are it's intensive care parenting getting you um, into a different relationship with your children that you can um, you can win their affections because in future programs not too far away now we're going to be taking you into a time where you can have uh, invite your children into a closer relationship with God so we'll run the break at this point and we'll be back very shortly. Well, I think uh, you're getting the style of these programs now. After the break, we come back and we, we give those challenges to you. This is a review program, so... Uh, how can we give those three things? We can't give you all three, but we're going to mention them and we want you to pick one of these that you feel is the most appropriate for your situation and your family. A most powerful motivator, that was encouraging words. If that's what your family needs the most, then focus in the next week, focus about encouraging words. Or maybe it was one-on-one -on -one time, maybe that's what you need then focus on one-on-one -on -one time. Plan a time, whether it be an hour or half a day or a whole outing, I don't know. Spend some one-on-one -on -one time. Or the last one would be, but it's not my birthday, which was about intelligent, uh, focused, thoughtful gift giving. Maybe that's what you feel would open up your heart, uh, the heart of your children more than anything else. We'll pray for you and we'll pray for ourselves right now. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your great love to us, that you don't leave us in the dark over the things that we need to do for our children and for our families. And I pray for ourselves and for the viewers that you would help us to know exactly what is the next step in this process for us and our families. And I thank you for your wisdom and your love and guidance for each one of us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, it's been said that the road to success has many parking spots. Don't make now a parking spot. We've got to continue on. The next program uh, is entitled Invest in the Best. And we're going to show you something there that will really help every family. <laughs> 